people, I just, uh, hey people, posting videos right now and I just realized that I am four videos away from 1,000. Absolutely incredible. I cannot believe the pace of how fast I have been putting videos on this channel. So this is going to be my 1,000th video. I just thought, uh, I've got some others I'm going to post tonight, but I want this to be the 1,000th. This is my rescue dog. I've had her for a little over a year and a half. Um, she is, if you look at my videos, you'll see she's in a lot of my videos. I wasn't even planning on rescuing a dog. had no intentions of rescuing a dog. But uh, I went down to this place, and they had a grand opening, and I checked it out, and I went, hey, this is really neat. You know, free food, lots of animals, lots of cool people. Uh, love the staff. Everybody's really nice. And for me, I just thought, this is kind of like a really neat place. This is going to be my local zoo. I can go over there. I can see the dogs. I can see the cats. I can visit. And that's what it became. It was a place that I could go to and really enjoy myself, go there for a few minutes, see the animals, and leave. And I went in there one day, and I saw this beautiful dog. And she was in her suite. That's what they call them, suites. Tiled suites. Very nice uh, facility. She was in her suite. And I got down on the floor. They have a little, right in the doors, they have doors, glass doors. And there's an opening down at the bottom. You can put your hand down there, and the dog can sniff your fingers and sniff your hand. And hear you as you talk to it. So I got down on the floor, and I put my hand over there, and she saw me, and she just looked at me and ran over to me, ran fast sprint over to me, and sniffed my hand, and I talked to her for a few seconds, and she was all excited, and she wanted to get out, and so she ran. They have a back door. You have the front door, the glass door, and at the back, there's a back door that the uh, staff can get to, and she ran to the back door, kind of like scratching it, sniffing, wanting to get out. That was her signal, I want to get out of here, Let get me out. I don't know if it was because of me, but she wanted out. And she did that for a few seconds, and she's a very smart dog. She realized she wasn't getting out. And she looked at me, and she kind of did her little facing me, made a circle, sat down, and just like exhaling a bit, saying, I'm not getting out of here. This is where I'm going to be. I'm stuck. And she just went down on the floor and sat there. And I absolutely fell for her that day. Just really loved this dog. And I went back in there again. And, and again, I wasn't really expecting to rescue a dog. We were talking about it. Me and my mom. My mom wanted a dog. She kept on saying, get a dog. She wanted a dog. She said she'd get a dog. And I would go over there and take care of it. And that was her plan. I could go over there. And when she couldn't handle the dog, I would handle it. And then I told her, I said... She wanted like a 50-pound dog, a 45, 60-pound dog, something like that. I said, you can't handle that at your age. You know, first off, you can't handle the weight of the dog. You're not going to be able to handle a big dog. You're not going to be able to walk it. It's not like years ago when you could put your dog out in the backyard and let it do its thing. Now you've got to worry about possums and squirrels and mice. The neighbors down the block have mice, and there's some rats that have floated around. And you just have to worry about that stuff. So I said, you can't really put an animal out nowadays. You could, but it's not the best thing. So, uh, but she wanted a big dog. And so I went back and I checked this dog out again and the same thing. I just really, I looked at her and I just had a connection with her. And I told them, I said, if this dog, this dog needs to be with a family. This dog should be in a house with a happy family and that's where this dog should live its life, her life. I said, if this dog is still here in a month when my birthday comes by, then I'm going to get her out of here. That will be my birthday gift, and I will take care of her. And so what ended up happening was um, there are other dogs in the place, and she wasn't able to deal with all the excitement. Just It was too much stress for her. She's a very sweet dog, very sensitive. I call her a very, oh, my little lady, but she's a very tough dog. She's very strong-willed, very stubborn, does what she wants. If she doesn't want to listen to me, she'll look right at me. I'm like, I'm not going to do what you want. And other times she'll run over to me and say, you can clean my eyes, you can take care of me, you can trim my hair. And she puts up with a lot. So um, she was very stressed out over there and couldn't handle being in the room where people were looking at her and the noise of the other dogs in the room. 
And let me add to that, the day before, uh, well, no, before she, before I got her, she was, uh, her owners took her to a kill shelter. And they, she was a surrender. They took her to a shelter and then they went back east. They moved back east. And I found video online of her being in that shelter for one night. And just the way she looked, her hair was an absolute mess. Her fur was a mess. She was all knotted up. She had uh, a bad skin problem, irritated skin, completely chewed the hair on the back of her back uh, by the tail. And I saw her in that uh, the video in that shelter, and it's just so sad. She was petrified, absolutely. It's a little dog in a in a closed-in brick wall room, and she was petrified. And all the dogs and the howling and the crying, and fortunately, fortunately for her, she was uh, she was supposed to be available for adoption a few days later. And fortunately for her, she was removed from there the next day. For some reason, they took her out of there, and she was supposed to be transported to another location, I guess an adoption place or a, a safer place for her where she could be adopted out or rescued out. And she was put on the wrong, tr wrong transport and ended up at the place that I ended up finding her at. So it's kind of like she's very lucky, um, and I'm lucky. So they took her and they put her downstairs in their cages where... The, uh, they do the quarantine for the dogs, or the dogs that can't handle it. When the dogs come in, it's an intake area. They put her down there just so that she'd be able to have some quiet. It was darker down there, much quieter, uh, not a lot of activity. And that's where she was. And I went in there one day, and I said, can I see her? And they said, oh, she's downstairs. And for some reason, they asked me. They said, do you want, do you want us to take her outside so you can see her? And... Um, yeah, I wanted to do that, but what ended up happening is I brought my mom down there mm -hmm. because I had told her I love this place and I was looking at this dog. So I brought my mom down there and they said, you want to see the dog? And we, they brought her out into the, the running area and she just went crazy running around in circles like a mad dog. And they used to say she was a nutty dog or a crazy dog because she had her own personality and she did what she wanted to do. And she'd get outside in this big area and she'd run around in circles and then she'd conquer. So she just conk out, she'd be exhausted. So I found out that the first night she was down there, they, uh, she was again petrified. They had her in an area and they won't, were gonna take her out for a, don't wanna say the word because she's resting, for a W. And, um, <clears throat> and so the guy uh, at the facility wanted to put the leash on her to kind of get her out so she could go to the bathroom. And he told me that it took 45 minutes for him to get her to be comfortable enough without running away from him so he could put the leash on her. You know, as I'm saying that, it makes sense right now because as I try to put the leash on her, she fights me every single time, every time she sees me and she walks away. So I don't know why that just dawned on me that she's been doing this since the very first day that she was in uh, rescue. But um, 45 minutes and he said, and she came over to him and she was ready to let the leash get put on and he coughed and she ran away and... He, he had to repeat this for a long time. So, uh, um, brought my mom down there. We checked her out, and I told him, I said, I'll take her. My birthday's coming up soon. I'm going to clean my place up. I'm going to get it safe for a dog. And if she's still here, then I'll, uh, I'll rescue her. And still wasn't thinking about it. Never really occurred to me, what is rescuing a dog? I grew up with a dog, but I never thought, what is this going to do to my life? And I got my place, I started cleaning it up, I got the ladders, I started painting um, the walls, but I just painted the whole place, cleaned it all up as best I could, which was not good enough, but I cleaned it up really well, for me at least. And then um, my mom was having a, a breakfast luncheon on a Sunday, and I was going to... I decided I wasn't going to go. I was going to spend my time cleaning the place up. And so I told her uh, Saturday, I said, let's go, let's go wait until your uh, lunch is over and we'll go check the dog out. And we went down there and, wow, you know, there's another time where I brought my sister down there, her, my sister and her brother-in-law to check it out. But um, my sister said, oh, no, don't get her. She's, uh, she's 
too much trouble. She's listed as doesn't like kids, doesn't like other dogs, um, a single family, single dog family, just a lot of warnings, and, which all turned out to be not true because she loves a lot of dogs. Other, some dogs she, like any dog, she's defensive over, but she's fine with dogs. She's great with kids, great with people. As far as the second dog, I would never do that to her because I wouldn't do that to me because she is way too much for me as it is. But uh, I wouldn't do that to her because I, she just loves me so much and I am her life. As weird as that is to say, I'm her life. She stares at me. She watches me. She follows me. When I leave, she cries. And if I, would, if I brought another dog in, I think she'd love it because she'd have company and she'd have a friend. And I think she'd also be very sad inside because she would not be able to hop on the bed and sleep next to me in the morning. And she wouldn't have the attention and all the closeness, the bond that we have. When I'm taking a shower, she's sitting right outside waiting for me. Uh, we just, we're really close. We have a, just an incredible friendship together. So I don't think it would be easy for her to handle. And I just, I couldn't do that to either one of us. So I went down there with my mom and I said, hey, I just wanted to let you guys know that my birthday's coming up in a few more days. And everybody knew that I wanted her. They wanted me to get her. They told me, they, wanted, they said, this dog is meant for you. This is your dog. I would show up and they'd say, are you here to take your dog home today? So I showed up with my mom and I said, hey, I just want to let you know, I'm going to pick her up in three more days if she's not with a family. And I guess it really wasn't even sinking in with my mind that this is, I could lose this or I could get it, uh, that, that it could happen. And they said, oh, somebody's looking at her right now. And that's when I just, uh, just an absolute nervous wreck. They said, somebody's looking at her now. And I said, what does that mean? And they said, whoever wants her first gets her. And even though you wanted her, if somebody's looking at her now, if they take her, if they want her, I don't get her. And I thought I was just going to cry my eyes out and fall apart. My whole world was just crumbling. And they were on the radio. They, they all talk on radios over there. And they were on the radio saying, he's here and he wants her and somebody is looking at her. And one of the, one of the uh, employees was going to go to lunch and said, no, I can't go to lunch. I've got to wait here to make sure that everything's okay, that I have to see what's going to happen. And so then my mom, just like she is, she likes to talk. When things are bad, I don't want to talk. When things are bad, my mom likes to talk. So she kept on trying to talk to me. And I said, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't want to talk. And I just walked away. I was walking around in the place trying not to fall apart. And I looked out the window and I could see this couple was with her. And what I found out later is a lot of people would look at her and say, she's very cute, which she is. She's very cute. And they realized they didn't want to deal with all of the problems of a very stubborn, st strong dog. And she knows I'm talking about her. They didn't want to deal with that. So they would walk around and they'd say, she's cute. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with the kid problem or the other dog problem or the stubborn problem or on and on and on. So uh, I saw this couple and normally they just show the couple out, the dog outside and this couple, they were holding the leash and they were walking her around and my heart was just sinking and I'm thinking, that's it. They're taking her home. Anytime they are going to come in and say they are taking her home. So I'm walking around and one of the employees that was delaying her lunch came up and said they didn't take her. She's available. And all I was able to, it's even emotional for me now, all I was able to do is uh, get out the words, I'm taking her now. And I walked away with tears in my eyes, just trying to hide my face so nobody could see what was going on with me. And every, the people up there, there were other people that were adopting a dog, and everybody up there knew what was going on. The word was out. I was waiting to find out if I could take her. So they said, she's available. I said, I'm not going to lose her. I'm not waiting. I want her now. And we sat down, and we did all the paperwork. And uh, me and my mom left with her, took her over to the pet store, bought some food, bought a bed, bought a list of things uh, that they told me to uh, to get and I took her home. They gave, the place gave me some bully sticks for her for the night and some food. I took her home and I'm sitting in the room with her and I'm looking at her and she's an absolute nervous wreck. She literally 
chewed and ate over half of a bully stick. And this thing is humongous. She just, just ripped at it and kept on ripping it apart and chewing on it because she was such a nervous wreck. And I was sitting there saying, what did I just do? I can't hop on a plane and fly anywhere. I can't do what I want to do in the daytime anymore. I can't just drive where I want to go and do what I want to do. I can't sleep late at night. I mean, late, go to bed at four in the morning like I do and wake up at nine o'clock and then take naps or whatever I want to do. Um, I can't do that anymore. I've got a dog. I can't hop on my bike. I was really into bike riding, getting on the bike path. Uh, I can't do that anymore. I can't ride a bike and do what I want to do. And, but the, the thought in my mind was, this is a life change because I'm not taking her back. I just love this dog from the start. And I was just playing it out in my mind, how is life going to be? Because this is how it's going to be right now. And I was okay with that. But, and, and so it's been a, it was a huge life change. And I've had her for a year and a half now. For the first year, she went with me everywhere. When I had to drive my mom to a doctor's appointments, the dog went with me. And I walked around outside with the dog. Or I sat in the car with the dog. The dog was always with me all the time. All the time. If I had to go to certain places, I would take the dog to my mom's house and I would say, I'll be back in 30 minutes or an hour. And then it became easier for me to leave the dog with my mom for an hour, two hours, and do what I needed to do, get a little space, get a little time to myself. She's getting a little flustered because she knows I'm talking about her now. So uh, I know this has gone on for 16 minutes. I'm going to end the video. I just wanted to do my thousandth video. And so life is really good now. A year and a half, I leave her at home for a couple hours, three hours, three and a half hours. She's fine with that. She's not happy about it. Um, I'll leave her at my mom's house. I'll, uh, I'll leave her at my mom's house and take my mom out for lunch or whatever I need to do. So she's able to stay at home, which makes things a little easier so that I have some freedom now. I can do what I need to do. I can go to the store and not worry about what am I going to do with her or who's going to watch her. And it's been an incredible experience, totally life-altering. I used to go to bed at 4 o'clock. Now I try to go to bed about 2 o'clock, um, maybe a little bit earlier. She, see, I told you she wanted attention. Hold on. She watched me. Look at that look in her eyes. She was watching me while I was recording, and she just wants attention because she knows I'm talking about her. And she'll drift off in a minute, and she'll pause, we'll relax, and she'll go to sleep. I love you. She knows that word. I said I love you earlier tonight, and she dropped her toy and went over and started licking my forehead. Look at those eyes, closing now. Go to sleep. You're okay. She knows the word okay. She knows the word okay is safe. So, um, hi, little lady. So, she, uh, I go to bed late at night, and about 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning, she hops on the bed and sleeps right next to me, which wakes me up. Not always. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and find she's sleeping right next to me or she's by my feet. But I guess I can sense it because I never, I don't roll over on her. I don't kick her or do any of that. Um, so it's been a good experience. And I'm looking forward to uh, spending a long time with her. I think she's got a, a long life ahead of her. And she's very healthy. And hopefully I'll stay healthy. And we'll be with each other for a long time. And I have to say, you know, a lot of people say, what would you do if, I've talked to people who said they lost a, a dog and they would, they had to put their dog down, they would never, they couldn't handle it, or a cat, they could never handle getting a pet again because they couldn't put themselves through this. And I put two dogs down when I was a kid and I just, and I cried for weeks, literally every night I would cry for hours. So, and I just couldn't imagine putting myself through that. Now that I've got her, I realize Everybody should have a dog. A kid should have a dog because it's good for them. And you can teach them responsibility. An adult should have a dog because it's companionship. It's fun. Um, these people that talk about their fur babies are like, come on, it's not a fur baby. It's a dog. It's not a, 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 a cat or day. It's a cat. So I don't go to the fur baby <clears throat> type of uh, obsession. But, I mean, I, everything is about her. I take lots of pictures of her. Take lots of video of her, buy her the top of the line food. I spend a fortune on this dog, and I have no problem with that because I'd rather spend it on her than um, on other things. So, a senior, I think every senior should have a dog. 
I've talked to seniors that say they wouldn't be able to take care of it. Then get a small dog, a lap dog, a dog that can sit on the sofa, a dog that doesn't need a lot of maintenance, that will go in a little in the backyard or go on a, a piece of cardboard. Um, seniors should definitely have a dog companionship, friendship, uh, as long as you're able to get somebody to uh, to get the the food for you. If you can't get it yourself, it will probably extend your life and it will make your life happy and it will give you uh, a lot of joy. So, and if you lose the dog or the cat, you know, I think about that with her because one of these days, you know, that's going to happen, whether it's her first or me first. If I lose her, I will be devastated because she is a very important part of my life. My two dogs were also, but I'm older now and I look at the pictures and I remember those times, but not as much as, because, you know, you get older and you've got the memories, but the emotional tie after a while, it I guess it kind of fades. You you learn to deal with the loss. Um, if I lost her, I would just fall apart. And as long as my health was okay and I was able to take care of it all, I would get another one. I would I would definitely get another dog because it's just the joy I get every day. It's a major responsibility. When I walk her, she yanks and tugs me. We've gone to tug, tons of training. She is stubborn. She does what she wants, when she wants, unless she wants to be good. Um... And that's why people didn't want her. She is, when I go to the rescue, they always say they're glad. She, she's with me. It was meant to be. This is a very stubborn, tough dog. And the rescue always says, if I hadn't gotten her, she probably would have been returned over and over and over. Because she is a tough, tough, stubborn girl. And, and I'm glad I've got her. So uh, I want her to do this video thinking about her. Um, she's very special to me, and uh, this is going to be my thousandth video. It's going to be an honor to post it about her. Please watch my other videos, do a thumbs up, subscribe, or a like. This is a review channel, so if there's a product you want me to review, if I can get a hold of the product, I will try to do that review. If you want to donate to my channel, it helps me out. It helps me buy this dog dog food and dog toys. And honestly, the money that I get, I also spread it around and buy gifts for moms, uh, neighbors, seniors, people. I do things that I can to help others out. Buy, uh, I have a, an elderly neighbor who's widowed, and I buy him chickens and give him gifts and food. and uh, I just do what I can with the money that I get. So thanks for watching the thousandth video. And uh, stay well, stay healthy. And sorry that I the dog is not blue. I have I had the dog uh, I had the not the dog I had the camera on a filter. Uh, the white balance was off, so it looked blue. She's not blue. She doesn't have blue fur. <laughs> oh my god! I, I'm not even going to worry about fixing that in the video. But that's my girl. And uh, that's it. I'm going to post this thing tonight. Again, I love this girl. My sweetheart, my little lady, my beautiful dog, my rescue dog, my heart. I love you, girl. I see those ears. I see them moving. I love you. Yes, I do. You're my girl.